In the previous video, I showed you how to set up a quarantine tank. Now let's discuss quarantine strategies and protocols for saltwater aquarium fish. To start out, let's talk about just observing a new fish in quarantine. This is typically done before any medications are used, or some may choose not to treat at all unless symptoms of disease present themselves. Observe the fish for at least 30 minutes a day at different times throughout the day. Be sure all fish are eating, breathing, and swimming normally. It is normal for a fish in quarantine to hide if you get too close to the glass, so you may need to observe the fish from a distance. The first things to always look for are obvious physical symptoms of disease on the fish. These may include white dots or growths, black dots, red sores or streaks, cloudy eyes, and frayed fins. Also be on the lookout for more subtle behavioral symptoms of disease such as scratching, head twitching, yawning, heavy breathing, paleness, swimming into the flow of a power head, and reclusiveness. Begin treatment at the first sign of physical or behavioral symptoms. Black mollies can be used during observation to aid with disease detection. Just ensure that the mollies you use are sourced from fresh water, not salt water. We will include a link in the comment section explaining how to convert freshwater mollies to salt water. Here are some photos of fish with various diseases. On top, I'm attempting to show the difference between ick and velvet on a hippo tang. With ick, the white dots are larger and can usually be counted on the fish. Velvet looks like dust on a fish, so the white dots are usually much smaller and more numerous. When in doubt, it's best to treat for both. Both parasites can be treated with copper, chloroquine phosphate, or two modified versions of tank transfer method, which I will discuss in a future video. Below, you will first see a clownfish with brook. This is treatable with formalin, ruby reef rally, hydrogen peroxide, or C-chem metroplex. Next to the clownfish, you will see a chromis damsel with uronema. This is an exceedingly difficult disease to treat, and any fish showing uronema red sores should be humanely euthanized to limit transmission to other fish. The tang with black ick can be treated by using Prozipro. At the top, you will see three different examples of fish with bacterial infections. These can be treated by using a broad spectrum antibiotic. In most cases, the antibiotic should be dosed directly into the water, but sometimes you can have success by soaking the antibiotic in food. The purple tang with HLLE doesn't have an actual disease. HLLE is more of a condition which is usually reversed once a fish leaves quarantine and enters a display tank. Lymphocystis is caused by a virus living inside the fish's body, and symptoms can usually be subdued by maintaining excellent water quality and feeding vitamin-rich foods. It is important to note that there are no known treatments or cures for viruses in fish. The best you can do is manage symptoms. Shown here are five different strategies for prophylactically treating parasites in marine fish. Strategy one treats marine ick, velvet, and brook. Strategy two is the most inclusive and covers marine ick, velvet, brook, and uronema. The only reason that copper is mentioned first here is because it's much easier to obtain than chloroquine. Strategy 3 treats either just ick or velvet and ick, and possibly other parasites as well, depending upon which version that you do. Strategy 4 treats marine ick and flukes only. Strategy 5 is for dealing with chromis damsels, antheas, and other species which are prone to uronema. Strategy 5 is not meant to replace any of the other strategies for comprehensive treatment, but rather lists additional steps which should be taken due to uronema's virulence. When treating with copper or chloroquine, you have the option of treating for a full 30 days in just one aquarium, or treating for only 14 days and then transferring the fish into an observation tank. Both protocols have pros and cons. Treating for 30 days allows more margin for error and thus probably has a higher chance of successful treatment. Treating for 14 days allows you to get the fish out of medication sooner before side effects generally kick in. However, you don't have as much wiggle room if you make a mistake. For example, copper and chloroquine dropping below therapeutic is much more likely to result in failure if treating for only 14 days. Here are the rules for the 14-day treatment and transfer method. Only the fish gets transferred and nothing else, meaning do not use anything at all from the treatment tank to set up your observation tank. 
do not lower the copper or chloroquine level prior to transferring. The observation tank must be at least 10 feet from the quarantine tank, from a display tank, and from any other saltwater aquariums. The two-week countdown does not begin until copper or chloroquine has reached therapeutic level and has been maintained at therapeutic throughout the entire two weeks, so it's wise to test your copper level often. Prior to transfer, the fish should not be showing any signs of disease. If it does, do not make the transfer. Now, I spoke earlier about ensuring that your copper level reaches and stays at a therapeutic level for a duration of either 14 or 30 days. This is the copper clock I mentioned previously. If your copper level is below therapeutic, not all of the parasites will be eliminated. Some will survive and continue to reinfect the fish. However, if the copper level goes above therapeutic, then you risk harming or even killing your fish. So maintaining a proper therapeutic level when using copper is very important. The numbers listed here don't have to be exactly maintained, but you should stay close, say within 0.05 ppm. I also want to reiterate the importance of slowly and gradually raising the copper level up to therapeutic. However, all bets are off when treating fish showing active signs of ick or velvet, whether it be a newly arrived fish that you are quarantining are dealing with an emergency situation in your display tank and you are trying to catch all of the fish for treatment. In these emergency situations, the risk of delaying treatment outweighs the risk of raising copper too quickly. So I advise raising the copper level up to therapeutic as soon as possible. So starting at the top, cupramine has a therapeutic level of 0.5 parts per million. Copper safe is 2.0 parts per million. Copper Power is the product I personally use, and as you can see, it actually has a therapeutic range of 2.0 to 2.5 ppm. It is better to treat at 2.5 ppm, but 2.0 can be used instead if the fish is showing signs of copper intolerance. The difference is I advise a longer observation period post-copper treatment when using 2.0 to ensure that the treatment has been successful. In fact, you should always observe for two to four weeks after completing any treatment because nothing is 100% foolproof. Copper failures are rare, but they do happen. I will also post in the comments section a do-it-yourself copper recipe for those in need of such. The recipe only requires two ingredients that are easily sourced on Amazon. Tank transfer method involves moving fish to a new clean aquarium every 36 or 72 hours. A very basic aquarium, as shown here, should be used. You should have two of everything, tank, heater, thermometer, air bubbler, etc., as nothing can be reused for the next aquarium you transfer the fish into. After each transfer, you should thoroughly sterilize the tank plus equipment so that it can be used again in 36 or 72 hours. As shown on the screen, there are three different versions of tank transfer method. Standard tank transfer method treats marine ick only. Velvet tank transfer method treats ick plus velvet. Hybrid tank transfer method treats ick, velvet, brook, and flukes. The primary difference between hybrid tank transfer method and standard is two hydrogen peroxide baths spaced exactly six days apart are done in between two of the transfers. There is much more detailed information about all versions of tank transfer method on my website and forum. Formalin is a very effective treatment for many marine ectoparasites, but caution must be used whenever handling it. Formalin can provide temporary relief for velvet, complete eradication of Brooklynella, and is probably the best treatment for external uranema. It is best to use formalin in a 45 to 60 minute bath treatment. Dosage is 0.6 milliliters per gallon or 12 drops per gallon. Aerate the water heavily and remove the fish from the bath at the first sign of distress. Formalin can be purchased on Amazon. Look for 37% UPC lab grade formaldehyde that also contains 14 to 15% methanol. Formaldehyde is a known carcinogen so wear a face mask and waterproof gloves whenever handling it. Prophylactic treatment of worms, flukes, tubularians, and intestinal worms. Strategy one, dose a prosequintal based dewormer before or after parasite treatment, such as prosipro, API general cure, or Fritz Paracleanse, 
In emergency situations, these can be combined with copper or chloroquine with caution. By emergency, I mean being in a situation where a fish is actually suspected of having both parasites and worms simultaneously. As mentioned in a previous video, DMSO should be used to help dissolve general cure or paracleanse, so either of these would be the best option to mix with copper or chloroquine. Prozipro, on the other hand, can cause bacterial blooms showing up as very cloudy water when combined with other medications, and this can starve the water of oxygen. Strategy 2. Give the fish a 12-hour bath using finbendazole at a dosage of 95 mg per gallon. Remember, when using finbendazole or prosequantil, you must treat a second time about a week later. Strategy 3. Keep the fish in hyposalinity, 1.009 SG, for one week. This only treats flukes. Strategy 4. For treating intestinal worms, it is sometimes more effective to food soak API General Cure or Fritz Paracleanse. This can be done at the same time as dosing the water with any dewormer. In most cases, antibiotics should not be used unless a bacterial infection is suspected. Antibiotics are harsh on certain fish and will also deplete the water of oxygen. So I recommend running additional air stones or adding a power head and pointing it towards the surface of the water to create more gas exchange in the aquarium whenever using antibiotics. If you do wish to use an antibiotic prophylactically, canamycin is a good broad spectrum antibiotic which can be dosed every 48 hours. If a fish is in copper or chloroquine, the effectiveness of dosing antibiotics is greatly diminished. Therefore, it would be better to do daily bath treatments outside of quarantine. Ciprofloxin or nitrofurous and green powder are both excellent choices. However, almost any antibiotic can be double dosed in a 30 minute bath treatment. Food soaking and antibiotic is another option for treatment. However, this strategy is more likely to be effective against an internal bacterial infection than an external one. Thank you for watching this video. See links in the comments section for more detailed information and join us on my forum for all reef aquarium related discussion.